I mean, I've got a lot of thoughts running through my head right now. Like, I mean, are Arkansas fan expectations too high? Are my expectations too high for this program? I mean, we're just talking about like having an eight win season, just something enjoyable, something to cheer about. Do you build stuff like this if you don't have high expectations for your program? What's up, everybody? Trey Biddy with Hogsports.com coming to you after Arkansas's 48 14 flogging at the hand of the Missouri Tigers for the, what, seventh time in the last eight meetings with these guys? I mean, do I start out by recanting everything I ever said about Eli Drinkwitz or Missouri football, saying that their program isn't on a par with Arkansas? Sure, I'll do that. I mean, we've come to that, right? I mean, we just want to come out here and have a good time. <laughs> you know, it's not it's just not asking for a lot just to not just have the program in just such a disastrous state. And, you know, all I did in the post-game press conference was invoke the name of Hunter Yurichek, and I guess Pittman thought I was going to go on and ask about his job security and all that stuff. I'm just asking, after he throws his support behind you, and then you come out and have a 34-point loss, 41-14, that wasn't even that close, to Missouri, where's the momentum coming from? to go into the offseason with? Like, is it going out and getting a big name offensive coordinator? And who is that guy? I mean, there's talks like it's gonna happen pretty soon. And I think, he's, I think he knows who he's gonna hire. I mean, he talked about the NIL money. You know, throwing money behind this recruiting and stuff. He wasn't able to expound on any of that, but it's gotta come from somewhere. You can't just keep asking the fans just to believe, especially after this program just dipped the way it did. And you know, starting off the season, so much is about momentum because we know good and well, like this Florida team that Arkansas beat a few weeks ago, I mean, they gave Missouri a run for their money in Columbia. What was that, like 33-31 Missouri? And Arkansas beat Florida. I know you're not supposed to compare scores, but that's almost all we have right now just to say, okay, this is that. But we know Arkansas like went on the road and battled and stuff early in the year. They didn't. It wasn't always pretty. The offense has been a problem the whole time. Offensive line, all that stuff has been a problem the whole time. But Damn, man. I mean, this is obviously this is like letting go of the rope and let, let's get the season over with and get out of here. And I know KJ got hurt and sounds like he's going to be okay. I was watching him the whole time, trying to work it out, trying to stretch. It's, you know, it looked like it was really bad when the injury happened, but, you know, thankfully he's okay. I don't think he'll be back next year, though. It sounded to me like it was one last run in Fayetteville and it just, you know, it ended un unfortunately like this. Arkansas has got to do some major work in the transfer portal and make a nice hire with this offensive coordinator. Something you can't just keep asking the fans just to come out and support and support and support and then come out here and it's post Thanksgiving, you know, the Friday after Thanksgiving, Black Friday, and this happens. Again, you know, they just, they've been so bad at home this year. You've got to figure it out. And, you know, you, you've obviously lost a large portion of the fan base. I mean, there's, there's just no getting around that. And the only way to fix that is winning. I was talking with a Missouri fan, nice guy down here. I guess he had passes into the suites and stuff. There's a lot of Missouri fans here. And he was talking about how they were ready to get rid of Eli Drinkwitz after his six and seven season last year. And, you know, what happened with Missouri is they got momentum. You know, they didn't play like Middle Tennessee State. They barely got by them early in the year. And then, you know, they had that moment against Kansas State where they really kind of screwed things up and ended up having that 62-yard field goal, and they generated all that momentum, I think, to kind of propel them throughout the season. And that's what so much of college football is about. So that's my question. Where does the momentum come from for Arkansas to get them into this offseason? And I've heard a lot of people say stuff like, well, what offensive coordinator is going to come for a lame duck coach? And maybe that's what Sam Pittman is. He certainly got some tough games ahead of next schedule. I mean, the first – Four, two of the first four games you're going to at Stillwater against Oklahoma State and you're playing Texas A&M and Arlington again. And I don't have to remind you guys, it's the last time by the way, that that place hasn't been very friendly to Arkansas. You can't come against those two teams 0-2 if you're Pittman in my opinion. you got to figure something out and you got to figure something out early. But where does the momentum come from to get these fans behind this program because they're not there now? I mean, they are in a way. I mean, it was kind of weird. There's like 25,000 people in here. It was kind of, you know, we all hate the term late arriving crowd, but I think the official attendance was 59,000. It might have been tickets sold. I don't think there was that many people here. But when they were announcing the seniors out here, there's like 25 in the stands probably. It's just kind of sad to see. And it's not, somebody took that the wrong way. I wasn't saying that like on, when I tweeted that out, that that was like 
something wrong with the fans for doing that. You can't blame the fans for not showing up for this team over and over again, you know, after they've had their hearts broken one time after another. And it's one thing to like lose close games and be in battles and four quarter games where you're just into it. But, you know, you just get your butts kicked right out of the gate. It's never a close game. And it's happened that way way too often. I mean, you have, like, let's think about the home games here. Kent State, you know, obviously you had the, what, Western Illinois, Western, Western Illinois, Western Carolina, I can't even remember. But that's exactly right. You can't even remember, like, who that team was. And that was, like, their be- their biggest win, but, you know, their largest margin anyway. But the Kent State game, that was very uninspired here. Um, then you come back, you play BYU. BYU's all right. They're not that good. And you lose to them by seven. They played better on the road this year than they did at home. What is that about? What Like, that's got to be something psychological, right? But, like, the 7-3 game against Mississippi State, a bad Mississippi State team, the 48-10 loss to Auburn, this game, 48-14, was that 96-24 in those two games? Your last two games here against notable opponents? So... Sam Pittman says he feels really good about NIL. That's what, we, that's what we've got because Hunter Juracek has thrown his support behind Pittman. And there's no games left. There's no – like, you could have you taken that endorsement and put a good fight up, not even, not even a win, you know, because I can think we could understand, all right, they battled against a really good Missouri team. They lost their starting quarterback in the game, but they still fought. And that's just not what happened. I mean, it just looked like you couldn't get generate anything. You had five or six fumbles. You got to be kidding me. Are you serious? They did it again, guys. They did it again. <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's going to be one of those. All right, back down and around. Hopefully we're not hopping a fence. They're supposed to keep it open like two hours after. So, you got a recruiting class to hold together. Sam Pittman says he's very confident the recruiting class is getting held together. You've already lost, you know, one big recruit. You know, you've got other guys taking visits, looking at your peers, looking at Missouri, looking at Ole Miss. So you've got a battle there, and a lot of that's going to come down to NIL. But you've got to come out and fix this offensive line. And people, like, we can talk about all the problems that you see out there with this, that, and the other, to quote Sam Pittman. But it's, so much of it starts up front on the, on the offensive line. And they can fix that, and a lot of people say they can't. You know, go, there's just not a lot of big-time offensive linemen in the transfer portal. You can get some decent offensive linemen. You don't have – Arkansas historically as a program hasn't just like always had just future NFL offensive linemen. But the fact that – I don't know what the sack total in this game was, how many they gave up, but the fact that K.J. Jefferson was sacked 41 times this season as a mobile quarterback is just ridiculous. And there's going to have to be staff changes. Like there's been staff changes every year, but there's going to have to be staff changes. You can't just accept – you can't accept – um, what this season has been and just act like everything's going to be fine. And I know a lot of you are thinking, well, that's just kind of what it feels like. I know a lot of people are saying that this needs to be like a Western Kentucky walk and talk. It doesn't do me any good to sit here and talk about, you know, Sam Pittman should be fired because of this and that, or am I surprised that Sam Pittman hasn't been fired and all that? Because Hunter Yurchek has put his support behind him and said, this is our guy in 2024, and that's where we are, you know? So right now, what I'm looking at is, all right, what's gonna happen? What's gonna happen to get this program back on track? Is NIL really what he says it is? Because he he isn't able to expand on it. He said he'd like to, but he wasn't able to because I asked him that question at the press conference. But (sighs) this season has just been just such a waste of everybody's time. 
And I, I mean, like, I don't, I don't know that there's ever been a year where I've just felt so wrong about everything. And a lot of it's because there's been so much change in just a short amount of time. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's what you get when you just keep getting your ass kicked over and over again. You just get kind of a redundant walk and talk. I mean, here we are repeating the one where I get locked in the stadium. At least I was able to, to get out of there instead of hopping it. I should, probably should have recorded myself in that first walk and talk hopping out of the stadium. Man, the old knees, the 46-year-old knees aren't what they used to be. How's it going? We got the Mizzou bus here. So this is the south side of the stadium. For those who haven't ever seen this area over here. I know there are some Razorback fans who like the inside look from that back side. Here's the south end zone. These people are excited right here, and they should be. Missouri's 10 and 2. They should be enjoying it. Can't blame them one bit. And there's a lot of Missouri fans here. I hope that doesn't demonetize me. I don't even know what song that is. But, uh, well, football season's over. No bowl game for us. What we have to look forward to is what's going to be an absolutely insane transfer portal season and offensive coordinator search. I've got a coaching search hot board on Hog Sports. i got 14 names on there. I think the name is on there, personally. But we'll have to see. So this is just basically everything that's, I guess this is all Missouri here. It's quite a production. All right, I'm gonna have to walk my way through here and hopefully not get stopped so I can get up these stairs. I can go this way actually. Yeah, here we go. Nobody's happy, nobody should be happy. Sam Pittman should be the most unhappy person right now. He gets to be the head coach of Arkansas. That's a great honor. Got to get it turned around though. I might have to hop something here. There's a gate. Remember when this used to be easier? They used to, I used to get on out of here. All right, just to sum up. 48-14, Missouri over Arkansas. Another loss to the Missouri Tigers. Another loss for Razorback football. Four and eight this season. Four and eight, not even close to getting to a bowl game. Just would not have expected that this is how things were gonna turn out this year, you know? And I, I do hope things work out for him. I, I mean, I do. Like, this is where we are. I hope he gets it fixed. I just, you know, like anybody else, just kind of have my doubts now. I did not like what I saw out there today. I mean, that to me is just kind of lazing, da laying down, letting go of the rope. You know, even defense, like there's so many, like you turn the ball over five times in that game with five fumbles. The defense gave up 370 yards. Now they had a, 200 yard rushing performance by that back who's really good he's i mean he what is he probably at 1400 yards this season now but uh you know, i'm not saying the defense like just played great but or you know or even played well enough to win but to me that's just not the big problem with this team to me it's the quarterback play hasn't been very good people bring up why don't i always why don't i ever mention kj holding the ball too long because I see defenders just go straight through. There was a defensive lineman who just went straight through untouched and made a big play today, early in the game. But how many times we just see like blitzers just come straight through untouched? Like this offensive line doesn't know what they're doing. And I asked Sam Pittman about this early in the year, if you guys remember, at the press conference about shuffling the offensive line auditioning players what what's going on here why is it, why are there struggles and he didn't like that question but it seems like now all we talk about is the offensive line and having to get it fixed and it starts there 
Like people can make it about all kinds of other problems with the program, but I promise you that so much of it starts right there. If you get off to a better start, you don't have these kind of losses like they're having right now. Because ultimately what this is is just letting go. Let's get this season over with. I'm not saying that's everybody, because it's not, but it's enough and it doesn't take that many. It's gonna be an interesting off season. That was an interesting walk and talk all over the stay, all over the stadium. All right, I'm done. It's the last walk and talk. Maybe I'll do something sometime later. I feel like I owe for the missing bowl game walk and talk. But I want to thank everybody for joining me. Hogsport 75% off right now. Good news on Tremont Mark being okay, or at least nothing serious. But Black Friday deal, Cyber Monday deal, Hogsport 75% off. Seven cents a day, 52 cents a week, 224 a month, $24.85 for the entire year. Are you kidding me? It's where you find all your Razorback news. If you like the walk and talk, you like Hog Sports Live, you like Drive Time Sports, you like all the free stuff that we put out, come check out what we have behind the curtain for our VIP subscribers. Whoo! All right, everybody. Missouri 48, Arkansas 14. This has been Trey Biddy with hogsports.com. Last walk and talk of the regular season. There's no postseason. We'll catch you next time.